In our first video, we're going to be looking at steep turns. Once again, we're doing our slow but constant bank to our 45 degrees. There's our 30 degrees. We're going to start to pull back a little bit, curve on the cowling straight out ahead. Me being a short king, that actually helps quite well where I can see and use that to help visualize. Now you can't complete a steep turn successfully just by looking inside. But that's not the point of the maneuver. This is a maneuver that you're gonna be doing in every single aircraft that you ever fly. From a small sling to a 747, you will be doing steep turns. Hey guys, it's Matthew from Sling Pilot Academy. Welcome to our instructional maneuver series, where we explain a maneuver on the ground, show you what it looks like in the plane, and go over some common mistakes. Enjoy the video. Hi, my name is Andrew DeClue. I'm one of the chief flight instructors at Sling Pilot Academy, and welcome to our maneuver series. In our first video, we're gonna be looking at steep turns, one of the most fundamental maneuvers that you will do from a small sling to a 747. A steep turn is a 360 degree turn at a 45 or 50 degree bank angle, depending on what rating you're going for. If you're doing your private pilot, you'll be doing a 45 degree bank, and if you're working on your commercial, you'll be doing a 50 degree bank. During this 360 degree turn, we're looking at a couple of factors. We're trying to maintain a constant airspeed, and in the sling two, that airspeed is about 91 knots, and we're looking to maintain a constant altitude. That can vary depending on when you start the maneuver and where you're flying. So steep turns are one of the most fundamental maneuvers that you will do from any aircraft you fly. It is the basis on mastering the aircraft control, understanding the energy of the aircraft, and understanding aerodynamics altogether. To perform a steep turn, you need to start out at straight and level flight, at a constant airspeed, a set altitude, and a heading. On the heading, you want to have a visual reference point that you can clearly distinguish from surrounding terrain to know when to start and stop your turn. So here we are in straight and level flight. To start the maneuver, we'll bank to the left or the right. Now, the direction of turn will depend on what you choose. You're going to ask your instructor or ask your examiner what they'd like you to do, but for the most part, it's up to the pilot flying. Most pilots tend to start with a left turn because they're sitting on the left side. So we'll do that. To start the maneuver, we're going to go from our straight and level flight at 91 knots and do a slow but constant roll to the left. As we start to bank the aircraft and we reach about 30 degrees, you're going to notice that because of the load factor increasing, the aircraft's going to want to descend. So at this point, you'll start to increase your back pressure just a little bit to keep the nose up and to rest any descent. You'll slowly continue your bank to 45 degrees and you'll hold that bank. As you enter that bank and you start your turn, you're doing a visual maneuver. So you're referencing the horizon to determine if you're nose high or nose low. You're also using the feel of your seat to determine if you are currently slipping or skidding. As you continue the turn, it's important that you scan your instruments every once in a while to double check that the aircraft is where you want it to be. And as you're continuing the turn, you want to look out ahead of where you're going to clear the area of any traffic or conflicts that may arise. We'll complete this 360 degree turn at a 45 degree angle. Throughout the turn, you want to continue to scan the horizon to make sure that you're not climbing or descending. As we start to get towards our starting visual point, you'll want to lock your eyes onto that point and maintain visual contact to ensure a smooth rollout back on your point. As you roll out of the turn, it's very important that you adjust your power to maintain your entry airspeed and that you adjust your trim and altitude to maintain the altitude that you started the maneuver at. Now at Sling Pilot Academy, we recommend pilots don't use trim during this maneuver. What can happen is after you finish your first turn and you reach the starting point, you'll immediately begin your turn back to the right and do the maneuver the other way. What can happen if you use trim throughout this maneuver is as you roll your wings level and then begin the turn in the other direction, the plane will become out of trim and it can cause you to climb or descend and leave ACS standards. Some common mistakes that pilots make when they're first learning steep turns is fixating on the instruments inside the aircraft. Remember, this is a visual maneuver. If you're trained to be a private pilot or a commercial pilot, you are trained to be a visual pilot and fly by visual cues. The best attitude instrument that you have is the outside horizon. So during this maneuver, it's very important that you're looking outside to make sure that you're not climbing or descending, but also scan for traffic and make sure there's no conflicts that may arise. Now, while there's no simple hack to finish this maneuver easily, there are some tips that we can give you to help make it a little easier. One of the best tricks that I've learned during steep turns while flying the sling is there's a little curve on the cowling between the air vent and the main cowling that if you place that on the horizon, it gives you a pretty good idea of what straight and level is. 
Now this doesn't work for everyone because some people are taller, some people sit in a different position, but it works for me as a decent guide and it may work for you too. It's very easy to over trim the sling while doing a steep turn. And like I said before, using too much trim, it could destabilize you as you start to complete the turn and roll in the other direction. Another common mistake is incorrect power inputs. It's very important that when you start this maneuver, you are holding a constant airspeed. Your throttle is not changing position. Once you have found the correct power setting to hold about 90 to 91 knots, the power should stay right there. Now, as you start to roll into the turn, you may need to introduce a little bit of power, and that is okay. But it's very important that you do not firewall and go full power or make large adjustments. If you do make a large adjustment in any control surface, whether it's the ailerons, elevator, rudders, or the throttle, will cause you to destabilize and possibly leave ACS standards. And now that we've covered the basics of a steep turn, let's go out to the plane and do it in the air. All right, so we're up in cruise right now, and the first thing that we're gonna do before we start any maneuver is make sure that the aircraft is ready for the maneuver and that the area around us is clear. So to do that, we like to run the IP3C checklist which is instruments, position, clear, call, and then configure. So we'll start out with the eye, which is instruments, and we're just gonna take a look at our panel here, make sure everything's green, everything's happy, we don't have any kind of warning lights or anything like that, which everything in this plane looks nice and perfect. Once we've done that, we wanna determine our position. So we'll use our moving map and also visually to kind of gauge where we are and where we're gonna go in the case that we have an emergency. So right now we're just south of Point Firm and at 4,500, so we have some good altitudes where we can, uh, we can glide out to wherever we need to go in case we have an emergency, uh, maybe two miles south, 2.4 miles south, perfect. Uh, so now that we know our position and where we're gonna go, you know, we have our soccer field down there, we have the dirt patch, and we might even be able to make it to the airport. It's, it's pretty light winds out here, so that might work. But now that we have our instruments position checked, we're gonna do our call. So we'll get on the radio, now that we know our position, and make a call to all the other aircraft in the practice area and let them know what we're doing. Navy practice area, white sling, 866 Sierra Lima, two and a half miles south of Point Furman, 4,500 eastbound maneuvering PV. Now that we made our call and the other aircraft know what we're doing, we're gonna go ahead and make a 360 degree turn and visually scan for traffic around the entire turn to make sure that the area is clear. To do this, we like to do just a standard rate turn. It takes about two minutes. And we'll just do a nice visual scan up, down, left, and right, and look for any aircraft that may pose a hazard to us during our maneuver. So now that we've completed our clearing turn and we've saw there's no traffic near us, we're ready to start this maneuver. All right, so now that we are set and we're ready for our maneuver, we'll start. Now, you could always do either direction. Um, ask your examiner which direction they'd like to start in, but most of the time they're gonna let you pick. So in our case, I always start to the left. That's what most people do, because you're sitting on the left side. Yeah, so now that our altitude, airspeed, and heading is stable, what we wanna find is an outside visual reference point that we can use to say, here's where I'm starting and here's where I'm ending, because you're gonna be looking outside to measure when you reach your point. All right, so now that we're ready to start the maneuver, we're gonna do a slow but constant bank to the left and not stop that roll until we're at a 45 degree angle. What's important as we start to reach about the 30 degree point on the bank, we need to start adding some back pressure to maintain the altitude because our load is gonna start increasing so the plane's gonna want to descend. Sometimes you may need to add a little power too, so it's important to do a quick scan of your airspeed and just measure the energy of the aircraft as you start the turn. So we'll go ahead and start here. We're gonna do a nice constant roll. As I hit about 30 degrees, I'm gonna pull back a little bit. Maybe increase my power just a touch. There's 45, and now we're looking outside. Now every couple of seconds, we're gonna look inside and do a quick scan. Like right now, I can see my airspeed slightly slowing down or speeding up, so I'm gonna make some small adjustments. And we're back outside, because this is a visual maneuver. We're gonna continue all the way around, and as we slowly approach our starting heading, we're gonna slowly but constantly roll back to that heading and make sure our aircraft is back in a stable state with the near the same altitude we started at, airspeed is back at 91, and our heading is back at 330. All right, so here we are. We're going to start our turn to the right. Normally, when you do this maneuver, you'll do the left 360, and then immediately upon finishing that, roll to the right 360. Now, in our case, we were getting towards the airport. We didn't want to fly over the land and get near all the airspace, so we made a turn back towards the south. But now that the aircraft is back in that stable position where our altitude is set, our airspeed is around where we want it, and our heading is good, we're ready to start the maneuver. 
Now in this case, my visual point is going to be Catalina straight ahead. There's a little bit of the island that I can see. So as I start to get towards the end of my 360 degree turn, I'm going to be looking out to the right, finding that point and keeping my eyes on it to roll out on that point. Let's get our airspeed set, get back on our altitude, and then we'll start our steep turn to the right. All right. All right, so let's go ahead and begin our steep turn to the right. Once again, we're doing our slow but constant bank to our 45 degrees. There's our 30 degrees. We're going to start to pull back a little bit, get to 45, and now we're back outside. Now, already I can see my airspeed's dropping, but I can see that I'm climbing slightly. So I can fix that by dropping my nose rather than increasing throttle and having to fix other things later down the road. We'll continue making this turn as we're looking outside. I've got my point in sight. Quickly check back inside. There's my point. And we'll slowly but constantly roll out. Right back onto our visual point. As we can see, we're still at about 4,500. We're still at 91, and our heading's right there. So now that we complete our steep turns, let's talk about the common errors that occur when this maneuver actually happens in flight. So one thing a lot of students do is they forget that this is a visual maneuver. Really the entire maneuver because we're VFR pilots is supposed to be visually completed. Now we do have our instruments to help us support and help us check that we're maintaining our airspeed, we're maintaining our altitude, and our heading or bank is where we want it to be. But what a lot of people do is they forget to look outside. Now you can complete a steep turn successfully just by looking inside. But well, that's not the point of the maneuver. This is a maneuver that you're going to be doing in every single aircraft that you ever fly. From a small sling to a 747, you will be doing steep turns. And it's very important that you feel out the aircraft, that you learn the correct back pressure that you need, that you learn the trim that you may need during the bank and the power settings that you need. So it's very important that you're able to do all that while looking outside. One thing that I like to do is there's a little curve on the cowling straight out ahead. And for me being a short king, that actually helps quite well where I can see and use that to help visualize am I nose high, am I nose low. Now as you'll see with every maneuver we do, there's no really hacks that you can use. There's none of these kind of shortcuts that make it easier. You always have to be on your game with it. But something like that is a nice reference that you can use, but it's not something that I rely on for the entire maneuver. So now that we've seen a practice steep turn and we talked about some of the errors, let's do another full steep turn. We'll do one to the left and one to the right. So here we are again at 4,500, we're at our VA, and our heading is going to be 030 to start. For my visual point, I have a mountain straight off my nose that I'll be using to start and stop the turn. So here we go. We'll do our constant roll. There's about 30 degrees, I'll start to pull back on the stick. 45 and now I'm outside. For me, I'm using that little curve on the cowling to give me a reference point where I can feel if my nose is low or nose is high. Every couple of seconds, I'm going to look around, make sure there's no traffic, and I'm going to scan back inside and make sure that everything is where I want it to be. If my airspeed gets a little low, I can add a little power. If my bank gets too shallow, I can add a little more bank. As we get back to my visual point of the mountain right there, we'll roll out, and we're going to go straight into our steep turn to the right, which again, a constant roll back the other way, 45 degrees. We're back outside looking for traffic, quickly checking the instruments, making sure everything's happy. And then we're using our horizon line again to judge our nose position. Now as we're doing this, we feel a constant pressure pushing us into our seat. That's how we know that we're at a good bank angle and that we have a good amount of back pressure in. There's our heading, we'll roll out. And now that we've completed the rollout, the very important part is to finish the maneuver back where we started it. As you can see, I descended a little bit at the end there, so I'm going to do a very shallow climb back up to 4,500. I'm going to get my speed back up to 91 knots, and I'm going to trim the aircraft back to straight and level flight. It's very important that you finish the maneuver where you started it, and you get the plane back to a stable state where you can complete straight and level flight. Now that we know how to do steep turns in the Sling 2, if you have any questions, reference the Sling Pilot Academy Sling 2 Maneuvers Guide, or ask any CFI or a chief instructor. Thanks for watching. I'm sick, man. And here we are. And <laughs> cause you to leave ACS standards.
Siren. <laughs> 